Hey, I'm Wick with RV Cool. Uh, this is Nick. Uh, we've been in the cooling unit business for about 20 years, and we ship cooling units all over the country. Uh, our biggest, our biggest customer is the end user, do-it-yourselfer that wants to install their own cooling unit. So, the most common question that we're asked, uh, you know, on a telephone call is, how hard is it to install a cooling unit, and can I do it myself? So. In this video, we're going to install a cooling unit in a Dometic refrigerator, and the RM2652 is probably the most common cooling unit out there, you know, your 2652s and 2852s. So we're going to walk you through step by step everything that you need to know to have a successful installation and show you that most folks with, you know, common tools uh, can install a cooling unit themselves with no problem. So to begin with, we're going to assume that you've got the refrigerator already out of the camper and we've got it sitting here in our shop floor. Uh, we'll start with the refrigerator standing up. We've got a few screws to take loose inside the freezer and in the refrigerator section. And then we'll lay the refrigerator down and start the removal process. Once you've got the four screws out of the refrigerator section, uh, you've got a white liner that goes around the refrigerator fence. This is a picture of the back of the refrigerator after the cooling unit's removed. And a lot of times when the factory puts the injects the foam, uh, it gets around their mold release and sticks to this white liner, and it's real easy to break that liner. So what we do is we've got a screwdriver that we bent at a 40, uh, 90 degree angle. If you don't have a screwdriver to bend, We've got a hacksaw blade, and Nick's going to show us uh, in the next step of this video how to go around the fins and loosen that liner uh, from the inside uh, so we don't break the liner when we pull the cooling unit out. So what, what Nick's going to do here is he's going to work his screwdriver in behind the liner and loosen, you know, make sure it's loose from the fins before we try to pull the unit out. Now. When you pull the unit out, if it is stuck and you crack the liner, later in the, later in the video we'll show you how you can easily fix it if you do crack the liner. Once you've got all the screws out of the inside of the refrigerator and you've got your white liner loose, uh, we'll lay the refrigerator down and most of the work, the rem remainder of the work will be done from the back. Now I want to note that in, we didn't take the doors off the refrigerator, we've laid a carpet pad down and uh, you know, to make the install go a lot easier, a lot faster, you don't want to take apart more than you have to. So in this part of the video, we left the doors on, we laid it down on a carpet pad, and we'll start taking it loose on the back. Now we've got the burner section to take loose, and the, the covers, and then we've got the control panel. We, and again, we're going to show you how to take all that apart without taking loose more than you have to, because a lot of this control panel, once you get the wires disconnected, uh, you can remove the entire panel at, at one time. So again, you know, we're going to start taking the the burner assembly and the control panel and move it out of the way so we get the cooling unit off. And we're going to show you the steps in doing that. In the first step, we're going to take the burner assembly loose, and we'll start out with taking the cover off of the burner assembly. And once you've got the cover off, you've got four screws to take loose. One that holds the burner to the flue assembly, and then you've got two screws here that hold the uh, gas valve to the gas valve bracket. Now you've got one screw here that he's taking loose for the ground wire and uh, then you should be able to go ahead and 
screw, once you got the screws loose, just move the burner out of the way and just let it hang there for the, right now. Okay, next we're going to remove the cover here for the uh, control the control panel. Uh, so go ahead and, and take your screw out of the top. And then use a flat screwdriver to pop the sides out on either side of the cover. Now, once you've got the cover off, you've got a few few wires to take loose from the board. You've got two connectors here uh, that go up to the upper control panel on your refrigerator, and then you've got your refrig your heating element lines here. So go ahead and take those loose. Once you've got the heating element loose, just go ahead and pull the wires out of the way. Okay, the next you've got wires that come in for your interior light, which will be the connector on the far left side of the board, and then you've got a ground connection here that you'll have to take loose. Okay, in this step, Nick's going to uh, remove the wires here from the high limit. We'll move those wires out of the way. And then the wires that we took loose on the circuit board, he's going to pull that wiring harness up uh, through the top of the cooling unit out of the way so none of these wires uh, are in the way when we try to pull the cooling unit out. What he just did was uh, cut the wire ties that were attaching these wiring harnesses to the cooling unit. And it's easier if you just try to pull one at a time out and work it under the coils like Nick's doing right now. Okay, just, just move it out of the way where it won't get stepped on. Okay, in this section, we're going to take this whole control panel and just move it out of the way. Now that we've got all the wires loose, uh, instead of trying to take all this apart individually, uh, to do this, we're going to go ahead and loosen the mounting screws on the four corners of the frame. And to get this panel off, it has to slide down. So the first thing Nick's going to do is uh, take these feet loose off the, fridge, off the bottom of the refrigerator. And each, each side has two screws, so go ahead and do that, Nick. See what Nick did was he took the top screw out and he just loosened the bottom screw so it doesn't have to take the feet all the way off. He could just move them out of the way.
And what's important in this part of the video is we didn't take we didn't take anything loose on the burner assembly, and uh, most of the wires stay intact on the circuit board. Uh, so it's a lot easier to put back together if you don't take apart more than you have to. And on the 2652, this whole panel will come apart. Okay, now we're ready. We're ready to move on to the boiler housing. Uh, we, we, we pr pretty well. We're just about ready to start pulling the cooling unit out. We'll go ahead and remove the boiler housing. Now, with the 2652 cooling unit, uh, real common problem with most failures in these refrigerators is a leak in the boiler section, and uh, you've probably heard you know to look for the yellow powder, yellow residue, which is a sodium chromate. So once we start taking the boiler housing off. Um, usually recommend that you get some rubber gloves. Nick's got some gloves on. Uh, when you start handling the insulation and stuff inside the boiler housing on the 2652 series, it's probably, you know, it's probably got sodium chromate that's leaked out in it. You know, you don't want to get sodium chromate all over you. So uh, in this section, what we're going to do is remove the boiler housing and uh, the, the baffle, you know, uh, the baffle you're going to remove out of this unit and put in the new unit. So uh, that's that's a step that's really commonly missed when when uh, people install their cooling unit is they'll leave the baffle not knowing what the baffle is. Uh, they'll leave it in the the uh, the flue pipe. We wouldn't pull that baffle out, Nick. Okay. So the baffle is just a long wire that's got this spiral on the end of it. And uh, this is the most common part, like I said, that, that people miss in their installation. So make sure that uh, once we get the new unit in, that we get the baffle back in the new unit. Okay, so to, to, get, to get the boiler housing off, uh, you've got tabs along it. And uh, generally a screwdriver just to loosen the tabs and just squeeze it together. And you can see inside here, everything is pretty well coated with yellow chromate. Okay, the last thing to do here before we uh, also notice that the heating element here is, is stuck. You know, it's been leaking here in the boiler section. It's gotten pretty hot. Uh, the heating element won't come out. So we'll cover that later in the video on what to do when your heating element uh, is froze up in the boiler in the boiler tube. Uh, the, the last thing before we try to pull the cooling unit is we'll go ahead and cut the wire tie here and move this drip hose out of the way, Nick. Okay, we've got to the point now where we're ready to pull the uh, cooling unit out of the box. Now, if you're lucky, uh, when you pull up on the cooling unit, it's just going to come right out. Most most of the time, it doesn't. You know, you got to break it loose. So we're going to show you a couple different methods now. Of, uh, we've got a few tricks. What happens is when the foam when the when the factory puts the cooling unit in the refrigerator, they put a mold release in. And uh, a lot of times they inject a little too much foam. The foam gets around the mold release, so it's stuck in place. So if if you you know try to pull up on the big pipe here, uh, and it doesn't want to come out, we're going to show you in this video uh, a few steps that'll make it easier. What you're going to need is a little block of wood or a piece of metal. You know, thin piece of metal is what we use to put under the coil. And then generally we've got a block of wood that we'll uh, use, you know, to pry against. And we're going to show you those steps here in this next section. Is uh, how, to, you know, how to break the cooling unit loose if it won't come out real easy. Okay. The first thing you want to do is put your block under it. Now, the reason that's there is we're going to put something in here to pry. 
and we don't want to puncture a hole in the refrigerator. So we're going to make a lever here. And because this pipe is in such an awkward place, you know, you can't get to it from the side to pry. So we've come up with this. We'll use a block of wood. Uh, that's a little short. Let's try a little bit longer one. We've got a couple. These are just regular one by twos you get to the lumber yard. And uh, the way we do that is we get, our, we get our lever set up and then we'll take a piece of strap. Now this is just nylon strap that you take off of a, we, we, we took this off of a ratchet strap. It's pretty tough stuff. So we'll just tie it on. Okay. So now with just a little gentle steady pressure, we ought to be able to, be able to pull this cooling unit, break it loose. Good job. Okay, go ahead and let the pressure off of it. Now, once you've got once you've got it broke loose, then uh, go ahead and grab that side, and we'll pull we'll pull the cooling unit out. Just pull straight up on it. Make sure that you make sure you got all your wires and everything loose. Nothing's hung up. Okay, in the last section, uh, we showed you how to, you know, break the cooling unit use loose uh, from the refrigerator using a pry bar. Now, there's some isolated cases where, you know, you can pry on it, you can't get the cooling unit to come loose, and uh, you're afraid you're going to tear something up. Uh, you know, kind of a worst case deal, but there is a way, you know, to get the cooling unit out. And what you can do is take a, you know, take a pry bar and uh, you know, chip out a big section of foam here in the middle. Now, what it's going to look like, you know, this customer had trouble, you know, getting it, you know, out of the refrigerator, so they chipped all this foam away. You don't have to necessarily chip as much, all the foam off of it, but what you want to do is get down to where the pipes are so you can use your pry bar to pull the, you know, cooling unit loose, you know, because what happens is there's a mold release in there somewhere, you know, when, when the factory put this together, uh, they lined it with plastic and then injected the foam and maybe they didn't get the pla plastic down properly or they got too much foam and you got foam in between uh, the refrigerator and the, and the uh, cooling unit. So uh, it's kind of a worst case thing. You're not going to run into it often, but in some of the earlier 2652s, the medic had a, you know, pretty, you know, it was pretty common. Uh, they, you know, they're you know, tough to get apart, but normally if you put a pry bar on it and put a little pressure on it, it'll pop loose. Now, if it doesn't pop loose, you're not going to hurt anything at all by taking the pry bar and chipping some of the foam away and uh, using it as a lever inside, you know, to get, you know, to the pipes and the evaporator to break it loose. And you can, you can uh, take off as much foam as you need to to make that happen. If, it, if you just take a little foam out of the inside, and get down there and, and you can pry it loose and it pops loose, no problem. If you have to take more foam off, that's fine. So Nick's gonna show you real quick, you know, you know how uh, he you know takes the foam out with a pry bar. Sometimes, no matter how careful you are uh, when you're getting ready to take the cooling unit apart, uh, with these older model 2652s, uh, you'll crack the liner and there's just nothing you can do about it. Uh, this, I'm going to show you now, you know, if it does crack, uh, what we can do about it is pretty simple. Generally, when the liner cracks, it's going to be a little crack in the corner here, you can see. And if you'll take some white silicone and just put a little silicone along this crack, okay, now wear gloves so I can smooth it out a little bit. Now, with the liner being white, uh, 
you'll never know that it, you'll never know that it was there. The the liner is so thin that it doesn't do anything. It's really just decorative. Uh, so if you crack it, it's not that big a deal. Uh, it happens sometimes when you take them apart. I found that the easiest way to deal with it is just take some silicone. And the biggest thing customers think that uh, the refrigerator is ruined if their liner cracks, and it's not the case. Uh, just a little bit of silicone, uh, it'll be it'll be just fine. Okay, once you get the old unit out, uh, you're ready to prep the box and uh, get it ready to put the new cooling unit in. So what you're going to do is take some type of a flat bar, something you know, something a scraper, something you can scrape with to get the old mastic off and you'll see that there may be foam stuck to the plates inside. Uh, in this installation, uh, the, the fins in the refrigerator stayed in the box, so you'll have to take those out. It's a lot easier in the next step uh, to go ahead and put the fins on the new cooling unit. We'll cover that later. Uh, but it's easier to do it, you know, to put the, attach, attach the fins to the new cooling unit uh, uh, with it out of the box, so you don't have to try to line the holes up uh, from the inside. Now what I want to talk about, uh, when you're prepping the box, um, you'll see videos and instructions online uh, that talk about sealing uh, the, the, the back of the cooling unit to the refrigerator. Uh, real common things you'll see, they'll talk about using uh, you know, the spray-in foam, expanding foam. Um, I don't like it because uh, it doesn't, when you push the two together, uh, it doesn't expand, give it a chance to expand. and. Uh, it's it's really hard if you ever have to take it back apart uh, you know you're going to break something that you know the phone block or the refrigerator or something you know it's it's too much of a bond uh, you'll look, you'll see other websites and instruction videos and so forth talk about silicone and again uh, if you put silicone on it uh, if you ever have to take it back apart for any reason uh, you're going to have a hard time and you're probably going to tear something up uh, what I found that works the best is a piece of weather stripping. Uh, you get down at uh, you know Ace Hardware, your local hardware store, and uh, uh, you know an eighth inch to a three sixteenth. This is a three sixteenth by three quarter inch weather stripping, and uh, and it does it does a real good job because what you'll do is is put it on the uh, uh, the lip here toward the top. And put it all the way around. When you you know once you've got it in, it's it's, it's got a it's got a real good adhesive to it. Uh, but if you ever have to take the cooling unit back apart, uh, you're not actually gluing it in, but you've got a really good seal uh, because se you know sealing the cooling unit to the refrigerator is probably the most important part of the installation process uh, because you want to keep warm, humid air from getting in the you know the back. Uh, around the cooling unit uh, because you'll get a lot of moisture buildup uh, in the summertime and humid weather. Uh, you know, so so sealing the sealing the back is one of the one of the most important parts of the insulation process. I don't recommend using the silicone or the spray foam. Uh, if you you know you can use them if that's all you've got, but it's worth it to go ahead and get the uh, weather stripping from the hardware store. And Nick will show you here in the next section uh, how to, you know, how we're going to prep this, clean it up, and then uh, install the weather stripper. Once you've got the box prepped, uh, it's time to get the new cooling unit prepped and ready to install uh, in the refrigerator box. And the the most important thing here you, is to uh, seal the back of the cooling unit. And we've already put the foam inside, but we're going to also you've got a lip that goes around uh, where the the bagging material uh, sticks out about an inch and a half all the way around the cooling unit. And we, when you go to when you put the, the cooling unit in the box, what I recommend using is a really good aluminum foil tape. You never want to use duct tape. Duct tape will deteriorate over time. 
okay? And uh, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't stick well. Uh, the, the aluminum foil tape will be there for a long time. And if you've got a good seal, all you know, tape all four sides, and you've got the the uh, weather stripping inside, uh, you've got uh, cooling units can perform a lot better in uh, hot, humid climates. Okay, so the other thing. Uh, it's easier to put the tape on, and Nick's going to show you in the next step, uh, to put the tape on the cooling unit while it's out of the box before you put it in. Uh, once you put the cooling unit in, it's really hard to fight around all the coils and try to get the tape on it. So uh, we'll show you the, in, the, in this next step. Uh, it's a lot easier to go ahead and put the tape on all four sides of the backing material before we set it in the box. Now the next part... Uh, where the where the cooling pipes here make contact with the back of the refrigerator, uh, the way it transfers temperature, it's a metal to metal transfer. Okay, what we use in that case is what we call uh, thermomastic. It's a temperature transfer compound, and what what you do with it is put a bead of it right down the middle of this pipe, everywhere that these pipes are going to make contact with the fins. Now, in a lot of videos that you'll see online. Uh, the, you know, dealers and so forth recommend using the thermomastic as a sealer. It's a temperature transfer compound, so you don't want to use the thermomastic uh, where we put the weather stripping to seal the cooling unit in the back of the refrigerator. Uh, so the, the, the thermomastic, what its purpose is, like I said, it transfers temperature from the cooling unit to the refrigerator, uh, but it, it's got a real, uh, you know, large aluminum content in it. Uh, that, that aids in the transfer, but it also keeps moisture from forming between your metal on your cooling pipes and the back of the refrigerator. Uh, if you get frost buildup between the two pipes, it acts like an insulator. Okay, so the thermomastic is a really important part uh, in this entire installation process. Once you've got the mastic on the pipes, what I like to do, and what Nick's going to do in this in this uh, video is we're going to go ahead and take the fins. Now, the fins stayed in the refrigerator uh, when we pulled it out. Uh, a lot of times they're going to come off with the cooling unit and you'll have to separate the two. In this case, they stayed in the refrigerator. I like to go ahead and put the fins on the lower section here before we put it in the refrigerator. Uh, when you do that, it's a lot easier to try and get the screws lined up here than when you put it in the refrigerator and you're trying to work through the fins. So. Uh, in the next video, in the next section of the video, that's what we're going to do. We're going to tape it, put the thermomastic on, and then we'll attach the fins, and then we'll be ready to set it back in the refrigerator. Okay, so once you get the cooling unit in the refrigerator, uh, you can put a spacer like Nick did here uh, under the cooling unit so you've got room to go around with a putty knife. And you'll see when it gets around to this side and under these coils, it's a lot, the reason we put the tape on first is uh, it, now all he has to do is, is run a putty knife under the coils and kind of smooth the tape down. Otherwise, you know, if you wait to put the tape on afterward, then you're trying to fight the tape underneath the cooling unit and around all the pipes. And now we're just ready to start putting everything back together that we took off and pretty much we do it in reverse order. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is put the heat pack back on the boiler. I wanted to talk before Nick does it a little bit about, okay, I, I talked earlier about, you know, the, uh, you know, the leak 
on this cooling unit was in the boiler housing and so we don't want to use the insulation that was in here once it gets you know saturated with ammonia and with the chromate the uh, the insulation won't do its job anymore so with our with all of our reman units uh, we, we send new insulation so you you want to take this old insulation out and throw it away uh, and again I talked about you know when you're handling the insulation it's got the chromate in it that you want to you know wear some gloves because you don't want to get the chromate all over you now we'll do the boiler housing first uh, we discovered that this unit was leaking in the boiler housing and the heating element was froze up so I wanted to mention here also you know we sell heating elements uh, it's a good idea before you order a cooling unit to go out and see if you can move your heating element or not heating element uh, if your heating elements froze up go ahead and let us know and we'll send a heating element uh, with your orders so you don't have to go out and try to find one okay so we'll go ahead now and put the boiler housing on Like we talked about before, the absolute most common thing missed during an installation is uh, putting the baffle in. So make sure you see Nick right there putting the baffle in the uh, flue pipe. Before we continue on with the installation process, the reassembly process, there's a few things that we need to talk about regarding the burner bracket. Uh, the Medic on the 2652 series had two different style burner brackets. That like on the cooling unit here, you've, you've got the welded burner bracket. They also had a bolt-on burner bracket. Now, the welded bracket was a 605 series cooling units, and the bolt-on bracket was a 606. The problem when you order a cooling unit is most customers don't know which series they have because the numbers are no longer uh, visible on the tank. So what we do is we put a welded bracket on all of our cooling units. So it doesn't matter which bracket you've got, the, the burner, which if you've got the 606 series with the bolted bracket, all you're going to do is take the burner assembly off of the bracket, discard this bracket, and then you'll just mount the burner to the welded bracket. We put a welded bracket on all of our cooling units. So if you've got the 606, the bolt-on bracket, just two screws, remove it from your burner assembly and just toss it because you, you won't use this bracket with our cooling units. Now the main thing is don't try to remove the weld on bracket that we put on. Uh, you know this is a you know charged cooling unit. Uh, you don't have to have this bracket. If if you've got the weld on bracket that we that we put on our cooling units, like I said, two screws, take this bracket off, throw it away and just use the welded bracket that we put on all of our cooling units. It makes it universal. And probably the last thing that you're going to do uh, is hook your thermistor, which is your thermostat. It controls your temperature. You're going to hook it to the last fin to the right uh, in the refrigerator section. Now, this particular model, the 2652 series, 
uh, doesn't have an adjustable thermostat, so it's critical uh, where that sensor is located on that fin. If you move the sensor up toward the top of the fins, the box is actually going to run a little bit warmer because it's going to sense cold because the the fins are colder at the top and it's going to shut the refrigerator off sooner. If you move the thermistor down toward the bottom of that fin, uh, it's actually going to get colder in the refrigerator because that's a warmer section of the fin. So the last thing you're going to do is put the thermistor on and you know if you run it for a few days and you're not getting the temperatures that you want, uh, if you need your box a little bit colder, then uh, move, the, move your thermistor down. But probably a good idea is to start out with the thermistor uh, right in the middle of the fin. Okay, so once you've got the insulation done and you're ready to put it back in the wall, there's one last step and it's important, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to lay it down and we're going to rock it back and forth a little bit and work the liquid into the boiler. A lot of units can get damaged, uh, you know, when you ship them through UPS, whatever, they get turned upside down, right side up, and you start it up and there's no liquid in the boiler. So by rocking the refrigerator, you want to lay it down. Okay, then Nick's going to rock it side to side a few times, and you'll hear liquid running through the system. Now when you stand it up, you'll hear the liquid running down to the bottom. But what you just did was uh, move some liquid around and uh, you know filled that boiler up with some uh, you know water and ammonia. Uh, so now it's safe to start the refrigerator and you don't have to worry because what happens when the boiler is dry and you try to start it out, your boiler is going to spike a real high temperature and you can damage the, the, fro the chromate uh, in the solution. Uh, but when you when you spike high temperatures, running the boiler dry like that. So before you you know before you put it back in the wall, lay it down, rock it back and forth, get some liquid in the boiler. Once we've done that, we're ready to put it in the wall, hook everything up, turn it on. And uh, thanks for watching our video. Uh, if you have any questions on RV refrigerators, give us a call. 1-800-515-6823. Or visit us online at www.rvcool.com. Uh, we've got cooling units for just about every model that you know Dometic and Norco makes. There's a lot of good information on our website, troubleshooting guides, and we have written instructions on the installation process also. So any questions you've got on refrigerators, heating elements, uh, we can help you. Just give us a call, and we appreciate you checking out our video.